Underwater monster movies are a staple of the horror genre for good reason. Most of us are awkward enough on dry land already, but bodies of water intensify all our fears. We're literally out of our element, at the mercy of nature. And we never really know what lurks below the surface. Hey! Far out! Piranha opens with a young couple sneaking into an abandoned military base. Let's get Naturally, they decide to go skinny dipping in the base's mysterious pool. I'm sure they'll enjoy a long, satisfying life together, and they're dead. The white zone is for immediate loading and unloading. Okay, we're all set. And when you get the Indian Spring. With the teens missing, a private investigator named Maggie sets out to find them. Well, oh, I know you can. I wouldn't send you if I didn't think you could. Come on, come on. Wait, wait, wait. Gotcha. It's open. Maggie enlists the help of a local curmudgeon named Paul. He's a simple man in that his entire personality is revealed by a single line of dialogue. Did my ex-wife send you? Together, they trace the missing couple to the abandoned base. We get a glimpse of a little stop-motion monster skulking about the lab, as if to warn us the movie's about to get weird. There have been five Piranha movies, and we still don't know a thing about this adorable abomination. What is it? Does it have a name? And why? Sorry, I'll get on with it. Well, they've been here all right. And they never left. After draining the pool to search for the bodies, they're attacked by a mad scientist named Dr. Hope. Draining the pool comes with some unintended consequences. As it turns out, the government's secret biological weapons lab wasn't entirely ethical. Uh oh. I let the good Dr. Hope explain. They called it Operation Razor Teeth. What was it all for? To destroy the river systems of the North Vietnamese. Our goal was to develop a strain of this killer fish that could survive in cold water and then breed at an accelerated rate. We had everything. Blank check. And then the war ended. You sound disappointed. By draining the pool, Maggie has just released weaponized piranha into the river. Paul realizes in horror that the piranha are headed straight for his daughter's summer camp. As if the stakes weren't high enough, the grand opening of a nearby resort is drawing massive crowds into the water. The dam. They let the water through every couple of days, you know, to keep the, the level steady on the new lake. The resort's down there, summer camp. All those kids Maggie and Paul alert the authorities and the military arrives to handle the situation. Most old school B-movies would have a happy ending here. But Piranha is far more cynical. And don't you get any notion, man. Because I got my gun in my other hand here. Okay? Instead, the authorities' responses range from useless to actively harmful. Look, you're a full colonel, right? I assume you can read a map. Here. The Piranha have got a way to get around the obstacle. Our heroes are forced to take the situation into their own hands. Maggie and Paul will have to outmaneuver the authorities in order to protect the public. Nice night, huh? Listen, are you gay? What? Oh, uh, well, I was just reading this article in this magazine, and... Uh, what did you ask me before? Look! Up in the sky! It's Superman! Now that we're all on the same page, it's time to address the great white shark in the room. Jaws hit theaters in 1975, becoming one of the biggest blockbusters of the decade. You're gonna need a bigger boat. During production, it seemed like a huge risk. Some guy named Spielberg was running wildly behind schedule and over budget on a goofy shark movie. 
its unexpected success sent shockwaves through the film industry. When exploitation producer Roger Corman heard a pitch for a Piranha movie, he knew he had a winner on his hands. Although he wasn't the only one who wanted in on the killer fish action. From Orca to Barracuda, late 70s and early 80s horror cinema was loaded with underwater beasties. Barracuda. So why did I pick this film to talk about? Of the countless aquatic creature features that rode the same wave. Well, most of those movies are unwatchable. Despite working with the same basic elements, the filmmakers behind Piranha made something radically different. Corman chose Joe Dante to direct his Jaws ripoff. At the time, Dante's only directing credit was for Hollywood Boulevard, a Corman production that was largely composed of stock footage. Welcome to Miracle Pictures, where they make a picture a week, and if it's a good picture, it's a miracle! Before that, he was editing trailers for Corman's production company, New World Pictures. Well, it was uh, Joe Dante who went on to become a very uh, well-known, successful director who started cutting trailers for us. And he was cutting one trailer, and I looked at it and I said, Joe, is this a fairly dull trailer? What can you do to, to jazz it up? He said, come back this afternoon. I went back this afternoon, and there was a, the same dull trailer. In the middle was an exploding helicopter. It made the trailer. Well, let me ask you a question. Was there an exploding helicopter in the film? There is no law that says everything in the trailer. Has to <laughs> Despite these humble origins, Dante had standards. The original Piranha scripts didn't impress him much, so he started from scratch with screenwriter John Sayles. Corman and Dante often get most of the credit for Piranha, but Sayles clearly had a major influence as well. Remember that soldier who got flashed by Maggie? That's Sayles. Screenwriters don't usually get to hang out on film sets, but Dante wanted him around so they could fine-tune the script during production. Together, they gave Piranha a wicked sense of humor that sets it apart from your average killer fish movie. Excuse me, want a phone? I thought I told you not even to say that word! What about the piranhas? What about the goddamn piranhas? They're eating the guests, sir. It also helps that Piranha is the only Jaws ripoff with the Steven Spielberg seal of approval. Dante went on to direct a few Spielberg productions most notably Gremlins, and its vastly superior sequel, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. We have Gremlins in the attraction. Could you have us? Gremlins? In this theater? Now? Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Do I have to come up there myself? Do you think the Grimsters can stand up to the Hulkster? Well, if I were you, I'd run the rest of Gremlins too, right now. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. Corman just wanted a killer fish movie. But Dante and Sales weren't content to rest in Spielberg's shadow. Despite its origins, Piranha is a very different film from Jaws. The creatures themselves embody the contrast between the two films. The Great White is the top of the food chain. Dignified and elegant in its own way, the Piranha is smaller, uglier, nastier. Piranha couldn't compete with the complex cinematography of Jaws on its tight budget. Instead, it's the editing that gives Piranha its teeth. The Piranha tags are accompanied by aggressive, unconventional editing. The cuts come faster and faster, tearing us from one shot to the next at an overwhelming pace. The rapid changes in angle are so jarring, it almost feels like the camera is attacking us. Say what you will about Corman's stinginess, it pushed creative filmmakers to maximize the impact of their limited resources. If Piranha has a message, it's that you should never trust the man. Of course, you've got your orders, Mr. Hop to it. They could have with the military crap, will you, Colonel? I'll take care of it. Where earlier B movies featured heroic authority figures, Piranha updated the genre for a different political climate. This is a B movie for the era of the Vietnam War and Watergate. Some things are more important than a few people's lives. From top military brass down to summer camp directors, the authorities are all portrayed as complete scumbags. 
You drained the pond? Yes, we found You let them out! Dr. Hope tries to blame Maggie for releasing the piranha into the river. You, you don't know what you've done. Untie me! Untie me! The question is what you've done, mister. But the piranha shouldn't have existed in the first place. And they definitely shouldn't have been left in a pool that would drain into the river with the flip of a switch. Beyond being malicious and negligent, the authorities are criminally incompetent. Piranha does worse than demonize the authorities. It mocks them. So, is Piranha a subversive satire? Oh, come on. The war's over, damn it. There'll be other wars, Mr. Grogan. Or a soulless cash grab. To put it a different way, should we judge this movie by its intrinsic merits? or by the motivation behind its creation. In producing Piranha, Roger Corman's sole goal was to piggyback off the success of Jaws. In this respect, Piranha is derivative and uninspired. Putting that fact aside, it's a fun B-movie that doubles as a post-Vietnam critique of the military-industrial complex. You came pretty well prepared, didn't you? Won't it ruin this part of the river? Well, sometimes it's necessary to destroy in order to save. That ought to count for something. To see what's so special about Piranha, we should take a look at the remake. Where did you go? What are you doing? Where are you going? Go to the gun! It's full Oh no, not that one. The other remake. The one Roger Corman produced for the Showtime Network in 1995. Piranha opens with a young couple sneaking into an abandoned military base. Naturally, they decide to go skinny dipping in the base's mysterious pool. I'm sure they'll enjoy a long, satisfying life together, and they're dead. Okay, have I made my point? Can I retire this bit now? The remake is a beat-for-beat -beat rewrite of the original script with clunkier dialogue and less humor. There's not much point in comparing the special effects, because most of the effects shots are recycled from the original. Did you see that? Over the course of a single cut, Paul has switched hands and changed clothes. They didn't even try to hide it. That scene is especially lazy, but it's far from unique in this movie. Overall, the remake has a few decent additions and it gave Mila Kunis her first acting gig, but it doesn't really do much to justify its existence. The two versions of Piranha reveal a lot about Corman as a producer. He approaches filmmaking as more of a business than an art form. I don't want to sound overly critical because I actually think he's a great producer. He's always had an eye for talent. Aside from Dante, Corman kickstarted the careers of Martin Scorsese, James Cameron, and Francis Ford Coppola, just to name a few. Corman often gives his collaborators wide latitude to make their own decisions, as long as they deliver a commercially viable film, of course. The original Piranha works so well because he trusted Dante in sales. Where they exceeded the expectations of a Corman production, the remake settled for the bare minimum. The original Piranha is both a shameless cash grab and a clever work of satire. In a collaborative medium like film, those things aren't mutually exclusive. It isn't subtle or dignified, but it's an effective exploitation film. Piranha is a great example of how clever filmmakers can elevate a standard B-movie into a cult classic. I had finished editing this video when I heard the news that Dick Miller had passed away. You may not know the name, but B-movie lovers will know him from the Gremlins films, Night of the Creeps, Chopping Mall, and yes, Piranha. His filmography speaks for itself. What about the goddamn piranhas? Dick Miller was one of the greatest character actors in recent memory. I just felt I should acknowledge his career before wrapping things up. If you want to know more about Piranha, I'd recommend reading Clark Collis' Retrospective of the Franchise for Entertainment Weekly. 
It was a great source for me while I was researching this video, so I'll put the link in the description. And if there's a movie you'd like to see me cover, leave me a comment. I might just add it to my list. Stupid cow.